How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a brand new study that tackles the idea behind the formation of the plate tectonics on planet Earth, but much more specifically, confirms something really important that one day might completely rewrite textbooks on how we believe geological processes started on planet Earth. But all of this, the result of the discovery coming from the Western Australia, inside the location known as the Pilbara Craton. And so let's actually talk a little bit more about this new discovery and what it all means, but specifically focus on the implications and how this connects to the history of our planet. But I guess in short, let me first tell you what the scientists recently discovered. They essentially discovered the definitive signs of what seems to be the oldest crater on the planet. The impact crater that seems to be approximately 3.5 billion years old. And that's at least a billion years older than some of the previous record holders. But just the age itself is not really as important compared to some of the other discoveries coming from this region, especially when it comes to the formation of continents. And here we first have to discuss this older paper from 2022 by basically the same team, Tim Johnson, Christopher Kirkland, and a few other people. We've actually talked about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but in a nutshell, here the scientists tried to provide enough evidence to suggest that plate tectonics on planet Earth might have actually been the result of various massive impacts. Now, this is not the first time this was proposed, but in this case, this was the first time they potentially had some evidence. But here, not a lot of geologists accepted this, mostly because, at the moment, there were basically just two main explanations for how we believe plate tectonics formed. Or essentially, one of the main reasons planet Earth contains active continental plates was actually assumed to be the result of extremely hot plumes inside. And this is the idea that became popular back in the 90s, with basically some of the explanations involving these massive plumes that seem to rise from the Earth's molten core, and as a result this ends up circulating the planetary mantle and thus produces the motion on the surface. With the other popular explanation involving the idea of plate tectonic processes basically existing ever since the formation of planet Earth, with the hard surface plates colliding and interacting with one another for essentially four and a half billion years. But when it comes down to it, there was no one specific explanation that everyone accepted, mostly because there was just not enough evidence. Only simulations and only speculations. But for a few decades now, there's also been this other explanation that was almost definitely not accepted by most scientists. The idea that maybe this all started with various giant impacts. And specifically impacts with rocks at least 10 kilometers in size, but possibly up to about 50 kilometers that would create such a massive explosion that it would eventually trigger a kind of a chain of events which would end up forming these massive structures known as cratons, representing a kind of an ancient nuclei of various continents. There are actually quite a few different cratons known to us and they're usually located inside various continents. And so back in 2022 researchers proposed that well there might be actually some evidence for this impact hypothesis not to be confused with the giant impact hypothesis that talks about the formation of the moon from the collision of early Earth with a planet called Theia, but instead the idea that a lot of different giant impacts possibly created these cratons and thus initiated plate tectonics. But here the focus was on one specific craton, basically the oldest craton on the entire planet. The one that you see right here located in Western Australia, the Pilbara Craton, a location that's at least three and a half billion years old and a place that's previously been used to discover some of the oldest rocks on the planet and to of course understand what early Earth was probably like, with some rocks in this location being approximately 3.8 billion years old, essentially forming during a period when early life just started to exist. As a matter of fact, this location is where we've discovered some of the earliest evidence for the bacterial life on Earth. Here there was a lot of different biogenic structures, very similar to various traumatolites and even various microfossils stuck inside the rock. So essentially this is one of the most exciting locations when it comes to geology and understanding early Earth. But quite a few geologists wanted to actually study something else here. They believe that this was the location where we can definitively find signs of this impact hypothesis or essentially find various signs of various powerful impacts that potentially created this craton and eventually resulted in the formation of the Australian continent. In other words, they were pretty certain that this is the place where we're going to find a bunch of signs of some kind of a super powerful impact with enough energy to produce some of the first moving continents. And so back in 2022, they found some evidence, but it was just not conclusive yet. 
and that's because that evidence had additional explanations. But in essence, they've discovered a lot of different rocks containing zircon crystals. And a lot of these zircon crystals are known for containing uranium. But in this case, this uranium becomes trapped inside crystals for essentially millions or even billions of years and slowly transforms into lead. Which then allows us to date these crystals using what's known as uranium lead dating by essentially calculating the percentage of uranium compared to lead. And so here the zircon crystals confirm the age of many of these rocks at approximately 3.5 billion years old. But they also contain very specific light oxygen isotopes, which actually suggests that many of these rocks seem to have melted somewhere on the surface as opposed to within planet Earth. Which basically implied that whatever happened here must have been the result of the surface activity compared to the activity from within the planet. Now you can find out more details about this discovery in that older video in the description, but in essence this was some of the first evidence that whatever happened here was probably the result of some kind of a major surface activity, with one explanation obviously being a giant impact. And not for example volcanism or these zircon crystals coming from inside the planet. Or just to rephrase this, it implied that the material here was essentially splashed out by powerful meteorite impacts, with all of this happening three and a half billion years ago. Now this is not the first time we've seen these features, as a matter of fact both Greenland and Canada also seem to contain them, but in those locations we have confirmed certain craters, they're just not as old. And well here, if we propose some kind of an ancient impact, and a very powerful impact, we do expect to see signs of various types of impact features. Now interestingly, not so long after this, in a slightly different part of Australia to the east, a completely different team discovered the largest impact crater ever seen at 520 kilometers across. And since this was a completely new discovery, and nobody out there knew this crater existed, this obviously came as a surprise, but also confirmed that there are quite a lot of craters still hidden from us, just waiting to be discovered. And by the way, this discovery and the video should be in the description as well. And so here the only thing missing was discovering additional signs of some kind of a massive impact by essentially exploring some of these areas. And so for the past three years, this is exactly what the geologists behind the paper in the description were trying to do. They combined forces with the Geological Survey of Western Australia in order to discover this mysterious hidden crater. And they started in a location known as the Antarctic Creek Member. A somewhat bizarre layer of rocks that actually contains different spherules or various molten droplets that might have been created during impact, but that could technically have come from somewhere else entirely and just traveled the planet because of the power of the impact somewhere else. But this is basically where things got really intriguing. Even during their first search, in every single location here, they kept discovering the same feature. A feature that to most of us will probably look absolutely normal, but to geologists means something very special. These are known as the shatter cones. And in every single case, shatter cones are only formed in two possible scenarios. We've only seen them during nuclear explosions conducted underground or in various confirmed meteorite impact sites. With these shatter cones essentially representing these somewhat strange branching structures that are conical in shape as the name implies, that require enormous pressures to form and have always been located in areas where powerful impacts have happened. It's essentially a visual evidence that in this case, this rock was subjected to extreme pressures of anywhere from 300,000 to 4 million psi that caused it to deform and form these very strange conical formations. There is actually quite a lot of these structures in a lot of famous impact areas, such as the ones near my home in Canada. And that's exactly what the scientists found here as well. Lots of shatter cones in various locations, and most importantly, they all appear to be just as old as various rocks nearby, three and a half billion years old. In essence implying that this location very likely received a powerful impact that was practically the same age as all of the other features, including the spherules, and most importantly, that huge continental formation in the middle, the Pilbara Craton, which by itself is an incredible discovery. Not only did this team discover the oldest crater on the planet, and very likely one of the most powerful impacts ever, it was also that confirmation researchers required for the idea behind impacts serving as the foundation for plate tectonics, and most importantly, in exactly the same location as they predicted it to be. With all of this described in detail in the recent paper by Kirkland and Johnson, published in a Nature magazine. And though obviously this is still not a definitive explanation for the source of plate tectonics and for why Earth is the only planet we know that has these continental plates, which is of course super super important for maintaining a life on a planet, here the discovery of these cones suddenly provides us with evidence 
that's extremely difficult to ignore. Because suddenly this giant impact hypothesis potentially became the main contender for explaining plate tectonics. And the explanation itself is relatively simple. Whenever a massive impact occurs, it removes a huge amount of lithosphere or huge amount of crust in a certain location on the planet. Here this is a result of lots of lots of rock being evaporated all at once. And right underneath this location, the mantle starts to melt because the pressure from above is suddenly released. And so once all of this rock near the surface melts, it actually forms these enormous molten structures that eventually solidify, creating various cratons, with each of them potentially being the result of some kind of a massive impact back in the days. But previously this was almost impossible to prove simply because we just didn't have any craters older than 2.3 billion years old. Yet cratons are much older, usually at least 3 billion years old, and seem to have existed for a very long time. And so now that researchers discovered a 3.5 billion year old crater, it suddenly provides us with that necessary evidence and potentially explains everything all at once. But obviously because this is such a grandiose proposition and because there is a lot of uncertainty here in regards to exactly what form these features, specifically these shatter cone complexes, it will definitely take some time to prove all of this and to determine if this is a theory or if there is another explanation. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.